today is something called elimination. It's like this really like elegant, I like the word elegant in mathematics. It's an elegant way to solve a system of equations. We've learned the graphing, not so great. Uh, substitution, pretty great, because even if the answer were a fraction or something, the, the substitution method would reveal that solution. Okay. Uh, but elimination is been a little better in a lot of cases, okay? And what's behind it is adding both sides of the equation together. Okay, and I, I wrote that you should try it. And right here, I wrote maybe too small for you to read. It says I realize you probably don't understand what that means. You don't know what it means to add both sides of the equation together, but there's no reason not to try something. Try what you think it might mean, okay? So, let's see. What that might mean. If I, if I say add both sides, if I say add the equations together, then uh, maybe I mean add the left sides together. Let's see what you get. Add the right sides together and see what you get. All right, let's see what happens. Uh, can I add 7x and negative 3x? Yeah. No. Can I add 7x and negative y? Yeah. No, not like terms, right? Okay, so what do I get when I add 7x and negative 3x? 4x. 4x. Here's the great part. What's y plus negative y? Zero. 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 Nothing is left. Just, just nothing, right? No yeah. y's at all are left. Okay. And on the other side, eight minus neg or sorry, eight plus negative twelve is negative four. four. Oh, am I so close? Yes. yes. I know what x is now. X is negative one. How close am I to knowing what y is? Yes. Plug in x uh, here or here. It does not matter. I'm going to try this second equation. 7x plus negative, wait, I just found x, not y. Yeah. Never mind. Let me erase all that. 7 times negative 1 plus y equals negative 12. Negative 7 plus y equals negative 12. Add 7 to both sides, of course. y equals negative 5. things to talk about before like, we look at our next example. Uh, one is, can we even do that? I just did it. It doesn't mean that I can do it, right? We have no justification for doing that, really. We haven't discussed that at all. We will. Uh, but before that, I just have a quick little thing that I noticed on the, the, uh, the requests that I wanted to address. I have the notes here. So let me just open up a new page, and then we'll talk about why or can we even do what we just did? Is that even mathematically legal? Uh, but on the quest, let me ask you, what is negative 3w, or sorry, what is 3w minus 3w? Zero. Okay. But what it is not is w. Okay. And yet, uh, quite a few, a surprising number. Uh, between this and the other class, when they were solving this inequality, they got something like this. They basically said that 3w minus 3w is w. Is it? No. But what I have to subtract from 3w to get w? 2w. 2w. I have to subtract 2w from 3w to get w. Okay? And here's where it happened, right? It's, it's clearer to see when I just write it up there and ask them what's the answer. But when you have an equation that's something like 3w, make it negative 3w plus 2 is less than or equal to negative 3w plus 7. Okay. Well, I'm going to try and collect the w's into one place on the one side of the inequality, right? I'm going to add 3w to cancel out this negative 3w. And when I add it to the other side, okay, well, what's negative 3w plus 3w? Zero. Zero, nothing. Negative three w plus three w zero. 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 But I got a lot of this. I got a lot of this canceled out because that's what you wanted to have happen. And then this just became w plus two is less than or equal to seven. That's not right, is it? What should be? What should this be when I add these together? Zero. Nothing. There should just be nothing there. And now we get this two is less than or equal to seven. So then, what's w? W is zero. Mm -hmm. Well, it 
w were zero, would it work? Mm -hmm. How can you be sure? So you plug zero in. Plug zero in there, and there it worked. Okay. Is that the only thing that w could be? If I plug in zero, it works. What if I plug in uh, one? Well, then I get negative three times one plus two. My what's that equal to? Negative three times one plus seven. It's negative three plus two. Less than or equal to negative three plus seven. And negative one is less than or equal to four. Is that true? Yeah. Okay, so w is zero and w is one? Yes, they both worked. Is there anything else w could be? Johnny? All real numbers? Yes, there's nothing that w can't be. W could be absolutely any number, and this would always be true. As true as this is true, right? So W can't be, you could literally write this sentence, W can be any number. Okay. The more official math answer would be all real numbers, as Johnny said. If you put W can be any number, W can be anything, you know, any kind of statement like that shows me you know what W can be. Anything, any number. Because there's no way that you can make this not true by plugging in some value for W. What if instead it looked like this? Now what do we say about W? It has to be negative. Somebody come up with a, a value for W that I can... I can plug in here and here so that this will work. There's nothing? Is there nothing that W can be? There's not. Okay. There, we can't make this true any more than we can make this true. In order for this to be true, in order for me to find a W that I can plug in and make this work, 2 would have to be greater than or equal to 7 which it isn't and it never will be, no matter what we plug in for W. So how do we say that? Not true. There's no, no solution. No solution. There's no solution to this inequality. There's no reconciling this inequality. There's nothing you can plug in for W that will work. Right? No solution is good. But behind all that is it's this mistake that negative 3w plus 3w is anything other than zero. It is zero. I think what happens is people know that it's zero, but then they were like, what, well, what does this mean? Well, I don't want this to be the thing that I wind up with, so I'll just put a w there. I'll just put things there just because the truth is inconvenient, and difficult, and confusing. So he sets up for that. Now, we'll get rid of that and back to the topic at hand. All right, so we added both sides together. We've essentially like collected like terms on the left side, the two left sides of the equation we put together, the two right sides of the equation we put together, and we came up with this equation that we could easily solve for x, and then we were easily able to solve for y, and then we had the solution, right? Probably a little faster than if we had tried to rearrange this and use substitution to solve it, right? So that's really cool. I hope it's possible. I hope that's legal. Otherwise, you know, what's the point of, of learning to do it? So, the question here is, can I add equations together? Right? Okay? So I'll be answer that. When I'm solving equations, what, what's the, like, the golden rule, the cardinal rule of manipulating equations? What you do to one side, you have to do the other. Okay, what you do to one side, you have to do the other. Or could I, could I say it this way, it may not even sound any different to you. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do an equivalent thing to the other side. Okay? It sounds almost like the same thing. It's a little bit different. Okay? As long as those things are equal to each other, those things are equivalent to each other, then I should be able to do it to both sides. Okay? Even if those two things look different than each other. Let me show you. I have here what I hope we understand is two equations. That one and this one here. Right? Can everybody see that? Do we have two equations here? Yes. How do I know they're two equations? Because they're equal. How do I know they're equal? 
So the balance here, this is flat, this is flat, this is pointing uh, mostly down at that little black line, right? So we have two scales here, which are balanced, which represent two equations. All right. Now, I want you to look what we have here. I have a green and a pink container, okay? And in here, I have just these white tokens, okay? Now, are th is this green and pink container exactly the same thing as these tokens? No. They're different things. But we do know that they're equal to each other. We, don't, we do know they're the same. So if I take this stuff and this stuff, right? Okay. Now that we, we had seen them on the scale, we know they're not the same thing, but we do know what about them? They're equal. They're equal to each other. So if I bring them over here to this equation, and I put this stuff on this side and this stuff on that side, is it going to stay balanced? Yes. Because yes. it's the same amount of weight on both sides. Right, if I can get this stuff to fit, and we should see it stay balanced. Okay? I didn't necessarily like add five to both sides, but I did add the same amount to both sides. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Totally fine, nothing bad happened. So when we look at these two equations, we can see that even though this stuff and this stuff don't look the same, this equal sign tells us they are equal to each other. So it's like taking a bunch of stuff off the left side of one scale and the right side of that same scale and putting it on the left and right side of a different scale, just like you did right here. Is that jiving? Is that gelling with your brains this early in the morning? Yeah? So this result for x equals negative 4, right there, it must still be true. Because all I did was take this equation put some stuff on this side, put some equivalent stuff on the other side, and this is the result. And the result is that the y and the negative y just eliminate each other. That's why it's called elimination. They cancel each other out. They obliterate each other. They like send, send each other into the void. There, it's gone. There's no more y's, which is convenient for us, because then we can just solve for x. Kind of neat, huh? I like that a lot. It was a very exciting day for me when I learned uh, but and I want to be a math teacher, so maybe there's something wrong with my brain. But still, kind of neat and nice. And if you think about like the number of steps it takes to do substitution, oh, there's a lot. There's a few more steps than this. This is just kind of nice. There's a lot of people just like this. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's the idea. We're just going to add two equations together. Hope that uh, two things get eliminated, and then uh, solve for one of the variables. Figure out what the other one is. Let's try another one. absolutely add the left sides of these equations together and the right sides of these equations together because again all we're doing is taking you know, stuff from one scale like the left side and right side of, of some scale that's balanced we know it's balanced okay. and we are taking the stuff to the left and putting it on this side stuff to the right putting it on that side I could put this stuff over on this side and this stuff on that side but that certainly wouldn't be helpful because then I'd have a bunch of x's and y's and numbers and we would want to do that we want to put the x's and y's together and the numbers together Okay, so when I put this stuff on this scale with this stuff and collect like terms, okay, how many x's do I get? Negative seven. Yeah, negative seven x's. Uh, how many y's do I get? Zero. And that's the beauty part. That's the elimination. That's what we're learning about. It goes away completely, and we have an equation with just one variable. Easy to solve. Remember, we need to add this stuff together too. Don't let that uh, get past you. 14 plus negative 7 is 7. We divide by negative 7 and x is negative 1. All right? If you got there, great. That's like the, the, the major uh, obstacle to overcome is learning that new, that new skill. All right? So if you find x is negative 1, you've made some great progress. But now we need to figure out what y is. So we just plug it in for x, plug negative 1 in for x in either one of these equations, it does not matter, and find y. Negative 3 times negative 1, I'm using this top equation, so negative 5 y equals negative 7. So a positive 3 minus 5 y equals negative 7. Subtract 3 on both sides. Divide by negative 5. And we're done. Negative 1, 2. Any questions?
questions? One more time. A few of you got all the way to the end, this last one. Uh, I'd like everybody to get to the end on this one. All the way through. And put some together. So you get uh, 3x minus 3x is 0. zero. Nothing. It's eliminated. That's the whole point. Uh, negative y plus 7y? 6y. 6y. Of course, 30 plus 6 is 36. And y is 6. Okay. Make sure you pay attention to what it is that you just solved for. You solved for y, so you're going to plug it in for y in one of these equations. I'll choose this one. 3x minus 6. equals 30. 3x. I'm going to add 6 to both sides. 3x equals 36. Divide by 3, and x is 12. So 12 is x, and 6 is y, and that's our solution. Pretty cool. All right. Now, what we're going to look at next is that sometimes, even though these systems of equations would just love to be added together and have something to get eliminated, they need a little help sometimes. Okay? They need a little help sometimes. So let's see what, how we can help this next one. What's going to happen if I add these two systems together? These, sorry, these two equations together? There won't be a zero, right? And no, nothing will get eliminated, right? We'll get. We get 14x, okay? But that 14x could almost be a 0x, right? Let's see how we add these two 7x's together and we get 14x, right? And if we weren't even, if we we're kind of like not paying very good attention, we might get a little overexcited. We might actually think that these canceled out because they're both 7's, right? We might think like, oh, they, they canceled each other out. But actually, what would we need in order for them to eliminate each other? Yeah. Okay, we need a negative. Now, can I just put a negative in front of things as I want to? No, no, no. of course I can't. Right, I need to do thing mass, things mathematically. Brady, you got a guess? Yeah, you got seven y and oh. Okay, subtract it from both sides and see where you think I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say no. Let's, we're gonna do something else, but it's a neat idea. So um, multiply by negative one. Uh, multiply what by negative one? Um, each side of the equation. Uh, so, right, the cardinal rule of, it, of equations is do the same thing to both sides, and while subtracting from both sides, I think we can make that work. For sure we can make it work. I think a little bit faster is maybe multiply both sides by a negative one, okay? So, keep that in mind, sides, the word sides means that we need to multiply this side by a negative one, and multiply this side by a negative one. I'm emphasizing this because well, this side is easy, it's negative four. But this side, to multiply this side by negative one, how do I multiply this all this stuff by negative one? What's that word that starts with D? Distribute. Distribute. You gotta distribute that negative one. So we get negative seven x plus three y. Okay. If you wind up with negative seven x minus three y, you'd be in trouble. It's gonna mess things up. Okay. So well, maybe I know this is gonna mess up your notes if you're trying to follow me exactly, but I'm gonna so they just multiply by negative one. Here's my new equation. Now think about it. This equation and this equation, they're no different, really. The way that they're exactly the same as each other is that they have the same solution. Okay? If there is uh, a solution, an x and a y that work in this equation, the exact same x and y are going to work in this equation. Okay? Because we just multiply both sides by negative one. It's kind of like having an equation that says 5 equals 5 they're equal. No matter what I do to both sides, it's not going to mess that up. If I multiply this by negative 1 and this by negative 1, will it still be true? Yeah. Really, it's just negative 5 equals negative 5. Okay, so it stays true. So this second equation that we have is not different from this equation that we had before. It's the same. It has the same solutions. Now this equation, we don't want to change at all. We don't want it to look any different at all. We want it to look exactly the way it does because these guys are now going to eliminate each other. history, but uh, let's, let's uh, work it out real quick. Okay. If you didn't quite follow this, just go ahead and write this down, work it out, just get more practice at adding the equations together, finding the solution. Okay. We'll do it again. 7x minus 7x is going to be 0. That's the elimination part. That's why it's called elimination. Negative 2y plus 3y. That made things easy. Right. Negative 2y plus 3y is just y. Whatever's over here, that's what y is. 5 minus 4 is 1. 
Uh, we know y is one. I can plug one. I can plug one into this equation, this equation, this equation. And the x that I get should be the same no matter what. Um, I'm going to use this one. I don't know why. I'm just using it. It's five seven x minus two equals five seven x equals seven when I add two to both sides. Divide by seven and I get. idea of multiplying one of the equations by a negative one. and the y's are not lined up vertically. That's just convenient. And if you want to rewrite it and line the x's and the y's up, go right ahead, that's fine. Okay. But all we are doing is adding the left sides together and collect like terms. Whatever is the same, we'll collect those. Right? So 6x plus 6x would be 12x. And uh, well, you can see the problem there. Negative right? uh, 8y minus y is going to be negative 9y. And if I add two equations together and something doesn't eliminate, then I just kind of wasted adding two equations together. I should just erase it and start again. Okay, there's just like, there's not really anywhere to go from there. When you add two equations and nothing gets eliminated. Okay. So how are we going to make sure that something gets eliminated? Kids? Um, multiply by negative one. Which equation should we do that to? Uh, the bottom one. Because? Just because. Just because. Can we do the, the top one? Mm -hmm. Of course we could. But Caden says let's do the top one. And we absolutely will do that. So we'll apply this side by a negative one. We'll apply this side by a negative one. And I bet some of you are just flying ahead of me already. So we'll just rewrite that first equation exactly as it started. We'll apply this by a negative one. Six x plus y equals. Remember the other side. Sometimes when we start doing this a little more quickly, we forget about the right side of the equation. Remember that it gets multiplied by a negative one as well. Now when we add together, 6x plus negative 6x is 0x. Negative 8y plus y is negative 7y. 36 minus 15 is 21. Divide by negative 7, and y is negative 3. Do you have what x is? Sean? Yeah. What do we have for x? Uh, 2. Anybody else have 2? 2, 2. Another 2. Four people agree. We're up to another 2. Yeah? All right. Five people agree. I bet it's, it's 2. I didn't do the work, but I bet it is 2. Plug well, a negative 3 in there. Let's get your x is 2. All right. Okay, now this equation, this system of equations needs a little bit of a different kind of a help. Okay? Because, well, with the previous two examples, at least the two, like two of the numbers were the same, and we just need to make one of them negative. Okay, but now we're not really it's not really set up that way. We can still help it along though. Something we could do. You got an idea, Sean? Add uh, something to make the Two variables the same, so I did two x maybe to make it five x. Okay, add two x. I like that idea. The only problem with that is if I add two x to this equation, remember the cardinal rule is do the same thing to both sides. So I wind up adding a two x on this side of the equation too, and then you know what? The x's aren't eliminated because they're just over there. Right? They get eliminated on one side, but they'll be on the other side. And they need to be completely gone. But that's good. We're trying to get the two numbers right, to be opposite. One positive, one negative, but the same number. 
So we can try and get both of these to be the same right here. Both of those guys to be the same. Both of these guys to be the same. Not, not really the same. Exactly opposite is what we want. Okay, and, and one idea was to add. Right? Add something blue. We'd have to add to the other side, and then it would not get eliminated in that process. So instead of adding to both sides, how about if we again multiply on both sides? What if we, I'll, I'll just tell you, how about if we multiply this equation on both sides by something? By two, 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 okay? Oh, Let's see what happens when we do that. If we multiply by two on both sides, we get two times five x is 10 x. Two times two y is four y. And two times 16, 32, and I bring the second equation along, I get 3x minus 4y, look at that, equals 20. Is that a good, a good deal for us? Mm -hmm. That's good, I love the y's now, right? I eliminate the y's and do that. All right, I am gonna let you go ahead and finish that one on your own if you'd like. I, do, I feel like you guys don't really need more practice at solving a system with elimination that is just ready to go, right? When you add them together, something could be eliminated. The thing we're trying to understand here is like, oh, sometimes they need to multiply by some other number, right? Not just a negative one, maybe it's by a two, maybe a negative three or something like that. So let's look at this system of equations. Any ideas how you can get the x's or the y's to be opposite? Um, you could you could um, uh, multiply by negative one on the bottom. By negative one? Mm -hmm. Okay, what's that going to do? It's going to turn the plus three into a negative three y. Okay, that would be good, except for we would want this to be a three y, right? Oh, yeah. Stop equation. That would need to be a three y to get that to be a minus. That for that minus 2y to be eliminated? Yeah. Okay, see so what we're trying to do? We're trying to get opposite terms, right? Monica? Multiply by negative 3. By negative 3. What's that going to do, Monica? Um, the 2x is going to be become negative 6x. So the x's will become opposite each other, and they will eliminate each other. So we have 6x, just writing the first equation exactly as it looks. Distributing this negative three. Now I'm kind of, kind of cutting corners here using a shorthand. I put parentheses around the entire equation and put a negative three out there. So we're going to multiply both sides by negative three. Negative six x, negative uh, nine y, negative fifteen. Remember that right side of the equation. Multiply it as well. And these are going to limit each other. Five y minus nine y is going to be negative four y. Give me four y is negative one, and we're just a few moments away from no x's, right? Plug that y and no one x's. One last nice thing here as I write your homework down. Give that puzzle a thought. How are you gonna get either the x's or y's, whichever you choose? You know, like we could conceivably all take a different approach and all get the correct correct solution. Right? So how would you get either the x's or the y's to be opposite? <laughs> it might require a little outside the box thinking. Perfectly. 
perfectly valid. Go with it. It will work. Other ideas? Uh, Johnny? Uh, on the bottom one, you can do times negative 5, and on top one, you can do times negative I mean, times 2. Ah, look at that. If you multiply, so Johnny's idea, the outside the box thinking, is multiply both equations by something. Right? Maybe you didn't think of that. That's a good idea. That's the, that's the kind of idea I'm trying to help us sort. I think that's just the, the easiest way to go. We could definitely multiply by negative two and a half. Yeah, here it would just make the other stuff messy. Uh, so if we do that, we get eight x plus ten y equals uh, seventy. And here we get positive fifteen x minus ten y. There's the elimination equals forty five. What's this, what are two other numbers that I could choose that would, would cause cancellation as well? Ready? Um, you can do times four on the bottom mm -hmm. and times three. Times three on the top. So we do three here, we'll get 12. We do four here, we'll get negative 12. 